Now, the race to the 2024 elections is giving birth to new political parties. One of them is Arise South Africa, which officially registered with the Independent Electoral Commission, that's the IEC, a month ago. Its leader, Mpo Dagada, was appointed to the president's fourth Industrial Revolution Commission in 2019. He says he's looking to bring South Africa into the technological race. He joins now in studio to tell us more. Mpo, welcome to today. Thank you very much for joining us here on ENCA. Thank you so much for having me and uh, good afternoon to all the listeners and viewers at home. Why Arise South Africa? I mean, you, you, you sound like you're somebody who's technologically savvy. You were involved with the presidential uh, 4IR uh, commission. I mean, that should be like the thing that uh, drives you. But now why a political party? Now, when we look in South Africa, I mean, the things that are happening, 80 billion per month is lost to load shedding. We have the youth unemployment currently sitting at over 56%. Poverty is at over 56%. We're the most unequal society in the world. State captures something we're here. We have 1,357 crimes committed daily. We have 138 people raped in South Africa every single day. 83 people murdered in this nation daily. Corruption, we lose 300 billion per year through corruption every single year and our state-owned enterprises don't work. So when we looked as young people, we said, where are we headed as a country? There's no vision, there's no perspective. And that's why you see our logo is that of an eagle because we said as young people, we have vision. We have perspective. We know where the country should go. So we said we can't sit on the sidelines and say we're depressed because young people in South Africa are depressed. So we came together and we said, as young people, let us stand up, let us arise, and let's ensure that we go forth and change the country. So as young people, is there a particular age group that you've been talking to? Because for you to set up and register as Arise South Africa, you must have done a lot of meetings and canvassing and discussions around the country. Definitely. So we've had meetings with church leaders, we've had meetings with young leaders, we've had meetings with young people, and majority of these young people were saying it's about time that young people get involved. Because where we're seeing the world go and what we're seeing happening, it's really not going to benefit young people. So the vision that young people have for South Africa is that they believe that this country has the potential to be one of the best countries in the world. I mean, let's be honest, as young people, we know things, we Google things, we use chat GTP, we use the internet. We know that there's many Minerals in South Africa worth 2.5 trillion dollars, not rands, trillion dollars in our land. Yet our leaders year after year, we see trucks driving down the entry to Richards Bay, driving down to sell to other countries. Meanwhile, the young people of South Africa don't have jobs. And young people are saying enough is enough. If we do have the minerals, there are a few that are benefiting. And the young people are getting nothing. Are you young people are saying we're standing up to redevelop the economy and the country. Just on that point point about using the, mi the, the mining sector as an example, are you therefore as a rise South Africa going to be espousing local beneficiation of our minerals? Definitely. Manufacturing. We believe that the future of South Africa is manufacturing. South Africa has the potential to be a leader in the fourth industrial revolution. We are able to grow homegrown 4IR technologies, robotics, artificial intelligence. When we talk about nanotechnology, medical devices, electrical vehicle manufacturing, there's no difference between Elon Musk and myself as a young South African. The only difference is that the leadership of the country, the pension as unfortunately that sit in parliament are just not getting it and we understand that because we recognize what they've done and we respect them but we also we understand that it's important that young people like they did in 1976 we arise and we take our rightful place because no one is coming to save us okay what the, just wondering i mean you're a new party uh, Politics can be a very tough game and you need deep pockets. We saw how when the new political party funding act came into being, even the governing party, the ANC, was complaining that it can no longer access all the private funders because now you have to declare. I'm just using that as an example. W what's your take? How are you going to fund yourself? Because the elections are not far away. The date has not yet been proclaimed. The electoral amendment bill was signed into law just the other day by the president amid a lot of criticism still. But are you, how confident are you as young people, as a rise South Africa, that you'll be able to marshal the necessary resources to compete in the general elections. The, thank you for that question, because this is where we appeal to South Africans, because parents are now saying to us that the biggest headache they have is the young children. And they're saying that we need these young children to be guided and have a leader. We need them to have a vision. We need themselves to see themselves within Parliament. Instead of them just seeing 60-year-olds, we want young people that are full of ideas, energy and drive to lead the young people. And what we're appealing to, we're appealing to JSC-listed companies. 
We're appealing to companies that have benefited from South Africa for the longest of time to say the young people of South Africa are crying out, saying we need to rise up and do our own thing and make sure that we're also fighting for ourselves within the country. So we're appealing to them to say if you are available, you're a donor and you resonate with what we're saying, please come through and assist us. Come through and guide us. Even the older generation, we've had many people say, even as, as, as the older generation, we support you because finally somebody's looking out for the young people. If we rescue the young people, the whole nation becomes something else. It's, it's really about the future. If the old, older people can hand over the baton in the real way, yes. that, that would uh, empower you. Can I ask you this question? If I had to, we normally place political parties, and that's what we do in the media and political analysts, we place you on a spectrum of left to right or center. Be, ANC current is described as a center-left party. The DA is described as a center-right party. EFF is described as a left party. Freedom Front Plus is described as a right party. What party in those terms is Arai South Africa or is that too simplistic for you? I love that question because the majority of young people are not voting because they don't see themselves in politics. Communism. Am I Karl Marxism? Am I? Young people are saying these concepts for us are not relevant to this day and age. In this day and age, we speak robotics. In this day and age, we speak artificial intelligence. In this day and age, we speak artificial intelligence, robotics, nanotechnology, and all these things shape government. We talk about e-government. Our young people want an e-government with the Justin's department and every other department is co-linked. So as young people in South Africa, we're saying enough with the jargon that confuses our people. Enough with saying this one is communist, this one is. We want young people to come up with ideas because what we see in Silicon Valley, what we see in Dubai is that young people's ideas are valid, their voices are listened to, and they're creating the billion dollar companies. Your Facebooks, your WhatsApps. These are young people in universities that created them that receive the support. So young people are saying, as we get into politics, we're not just only coming to disrupt the way it's done. We're coming to disrupt everything about it so that young people can see themselves fitting in the political sphere. And not only that, but is leading it, it. Is it your sense that old political ideologies are, are stuck Definitely. in the past? Yeah, we are where we are today because of these old ways. A lot of people don't realize that load shedding, the government was told in 1998 that you will have an issue with load shedding. All these politicians that came with their old ways of thinking did nothing. Today, South Africans are sleeping in the cold, in the shacks, no electricity for 12 hours. How could you not do something in 20 years? With young people on board, artificial intelligence tells us immediately, here's a problem, this is how you fix it. You can go on ChatGTP right now and ask it as an AI bot how to fix ESCOM. It will give you the solutions. Why? Because technology is there to help us. Drone tech technology. Why are the elders not using it? It is not their time. It is the time for young people. And that's why we're arising. Is it an outlook challenge or is it a leadership crisis challenge? Let's be honest about it. These people went to the struggle. A lot of them, their education was based on Bantu education. You talk to somebody in their 60s about nanotechnology, about blockchain technology, about artificial intelligence. About These are ministers asking their grandchildren to change their WhatsApp photos. If a minister, and I've seen this happen, if a minister has to ask somebody to change their WhatsApp photo, how can we trust them to lead young people? How can we trust them with the ideas of the future? We need forward-thinking young people that understand where the world was and where it's going. How confident are you that your message will Will land on fertile ears so that when people are looking at that ballot paper next year they put a cross next to arise South Africa truth is more powerful than evil they know what I'm saying is true they see it every day young people are destroyed every single day drugs alcohol frustrations unemployed the stats are there what I'm saying to the country this is the truth pastors have been saying to me that what you are saying is similar to what David did in the days of Israel where David came up as a young man and looked at Goliath and said this thing has been there for long but it's troubling our people let me cut off its head and bring something new so the parents the adults and the companies are realizing that what we're saying is just the truth Okay. What are your numbers now? I mean, uh, how many members do you need to register? Today, so you a thousand members. So you've register. got a thousand members? We've got our thousand members. Yeah. We do have issues with the IEC, and we're going to raise them to say, w young people what? are starting to what say they it? want to vote online. Young people are saying the IEC, if we're allowed to register to vote online and get an OTP on our cell phone, why can't we vote online? Because we saw what happened in other countries like Nigeria.
where politics and corruption can sometimes interfere with the voice of young people. And what we're saying is that going to the IEC, there's certain things that must change because majority in this country is young people and the voice of the young people must be listened to. If the young people want to vote online, the IEC must come to the party. You know, that makes me think of what the elections recently in Brazil, they, they all voted digitally. It was online voting and the results were out within a, a few days, even faster Definitely. than in the United States. Blockchain technology. A voting system that cannot be corrupted by anybody. Yeah. So you, you're getting the numbers. And so how are you mobilizing? I mean, how are you going to be targeting? I'm asking this because the old, you call it the old way. The <laughs> old way was to look at the big numbers. I mean, I remember a few years ago when Jacob Kezeshek Sazoma said the ANC has now got more than a million members. And I remember EFF Julius Malema saying they are chasing a million members at some point in the past, you know, a few years ago. Do you have that fixation about how big you must become as a rise South Africa? We definitely do. I mean, we're targeting 20 million voters come 2024. How we started, we started off with a simple WhatsApp group. And young people started to say, listen, you have to join this WhatsApp group. And we hosted Zoom online meetings where we discussed ideas. And people said, we're in, we're in. Young doctors said, you know what, we don't have much, we'll give 50 rand. Young people started to say, and what we then did is we then started adding people onto WhatsApp groups. So if you want to become a part of us, it's so simple. You go on social media, hey, I'm in, we add you on a WhatsApp group, you join a committee, you start to contribute and share your ideas. And we're doing this digitally. We're currently building an app with a political school to teach every young person how to engage with politics, how to mobilize, how to go out there and get other young people to think like you. We're going out to the media, and we want to commend the media and yourself to say, we, we, we are so happy that the media is welcoming of young people, because yeah. in South Africa, the government is not. Yeah, yesterday I interviewed a young man who's got views about climate change and how badly we are doing <laughs> as a country, and saying the same thing, that young people's voices are not around the table when climate change is being discussed. It's older people who are talking about the future in which they won't be around. Definitely. So you need to bring the young people in. So that's your approach as well when it comes to, to Arise South Africa. Can I ask you, your logo, you, may, you talk about the eagle and the colors and Definitely, all of yeah. that. I mean, red, yellow and green seem to dominate in African politics and you've stayed within that safe color scheme. Yeah, so definitely. So the red represents the blood of our former leaders. We recognize what the Steve because the Nelson Mandela's fought for, and we respect that. Now, the yellow is associated with gold, and that speaks to the abundance that South Africa has, that our land is rich, and young people are saying, out of such a rich land, why are we unemployed? The green is our natural wealth. Things grow. I come from Venda. Venda, nama avocado, zilichisi, mango. Things just grow. Our gray, and you'll see a rise is written in gray. It represents a powerful statement and a commitment to fairness, equality, and justice for all South Africans. We believe South Africa is for all South Africans, no matter the race. And the last one, the eagle, where young people were bold and very courageous. We're unafraid. Our vision and our perspective is clear. Our goal is clear. We are agile. We are quick thinkers. We are full of energy, as you can see with myself, and full of drive, because we know what we are going up against, and we know what we have to do to make sure that we win, and we're doing it every day. Thank you very much for coming in. They yeah, are very passionate and very clear about where you are headed. That's uh, Mpo Dagada. He is the leader of the new party, Arise South Africa, of young people. They want to bring South Africa into the technological race. It's going to be fascinating to see how the IEC responds to the pressure from young uh, parties like uh, Arise South Africa to go digital you know, general elections. Also, you know, it can be done. It was done just a few months ago in Brazil, successfully so. Still I